Hey old Kevin here, and ah oh, there's 24 Ultras out already? This year's tech season brought us some pretty refined handsets. Quite literally. Every phone looks the same, every phone is the same, but it's not that bad, right? Having similarities in products usually suggests that those qualities are good. One of those being the 5X telephoto, which meant Samsung acts the 10X. Wait, what? That's a downgrade, how could this be? Okay, no, maybe it's not a downgrade, I think. There's no questioning why everyone's throwing out 5X telephotos. They are just more usable. Portraits just look a lot better around 100 millimeters. I mean, just look at this thing. So the real question is, how do they compare? Oh, wait a minute, I don't even have an S24 Ultra yet. How can I compare anything? Oh, sick! How convenient! Since we're on the topic of cameras, why don't we start off with that? Phone manufacturers do put quite an emphasis on making their cameras look like spiders and screaming ghost faces. Like I said before, Samsung this year got rid of the 10x 10 megapixel camera and replaced it with a 5x 50 megapixel one instead. But you may ask, why would they even do this? Let's learn a little bit how a telephoto lens works. This here is a traditional telephoto lens. It's basically a telescope. When you spread these lenses apart, you get more zoom. That's amazing! Let's put it in the phone! So how do we fix this? Presenting the Telephoto 10,000. This telephoto is much like the real one, but it can bend! If we stick a mirror on one end, we can put this big ass tube in sideways. Problem solved. But that doesn't answer the question. Why did Samsung downgrade from the 10X to the 5X? Well, as a lens gets longer, there's more distance for the light to travel, in theory, worsening the photo. Samsung here is decreasing that distance, subsequently widening the aperture. Now you can capture pictures with more quality. Wait. Oh no! Now we only have 5X! Not to worry, Samsung have massive brains. They make the sensor larger with a higher megapixel count to compensate for the loss in zoom. But you may be asking, what the hell are you talking about? Because of the higher megapixel larger sensor and wider aperture, it can perform a digital crop and deliver the same, if not better quality, than the dedicated 10X 10 megapixel camera. And the bonus is you get a free 5X lens. Look how many buttons this camera has! So the question remains, is this enough to compete with the likes of Google and Apple? Starting with this cathedral, we can see that the most detailed output is from the S24 Ultra, while the pixel strays behind and the iPhone is noisier overall. Zooming into five times, the iPhone opts for a more over sharpened look, and the colors are washed out. This isn't the world's best look. Turning on the high megapixel mode of these cameras lets the pixel win. The iPhone looks like a crusty mess, but it makes sense since it only has a 12 megapixel sensor. Though I will say, it's not doing terrible and I actually prefer the colours here. So those were good and all, but the S24 Ultra is holding up one major trick up its pen hole? It's called... Della Macro Photography! As a person who used to review action figures, macro photography is extremely important to capture the finer details. I could always use the Ultra Wide, which can focus at shorter distances, but that looks a little doomed. To avoid the ultra wide distortion, we compress the shot by using a telephoto lens, which result in epic photos. Is that even a word? Well, let's take a look at that image again. You can clearly see the ultra wide distortion I'm talking about, so let's pull back with the telephoto. Much better. Now let's try again with the iPhone and Pixel. <laughs> As you can see, this is the problem we were talking about in our thumbnail. The iPhone and Pixel are completely unable to focus at this distance. To find out how bad this problem is, we use this Red Magic Mora figure and Smash Amiibo instead of a very definitely scientific test. Using the manual controls of the cameras, we carefully determine the minimum focus distance based off the focus on the figure. With the Pixel, I had to step back about 60 centimeters from the subject for it to focus. This isn't bad by any means, this tends to be the distance I would compose my shots, but... Just look at the Samsung! It's almost violating how close I can get! Now, how about the iPhone? I can't focus, I guess I'll step back. I can't focus, I guess I'll step back. I can't focus, I guess I'll step back. iPhone? The iPhone uses a weird... First of its kind, Tetra Prism design. It's like having a huge telephoto lens, but it's just in there. It does 
does not seem to be working well. You've got to step back 10 million miles with this thing to get the shot in focus. The thing just can't focus if you get any closer. Anyway, here's the photo the iPhone took. It's doomed. Uh, let's fall back from a more apples to apples comparison at Apple's minimum focus length. Here we can compare the creaminess if you will, of the background blur. And this is where Samsung falls a little short, which I assume is due to the narrow aperture of f3.4. The iPhone and Pixel take the clear win when it comes to the bokeh, meaning if you're taking portraits of people without portrait mode, you'll get more of a natural background blur. But then again, you could always go closer with the Samsung if the composition allows for it and get more blur that way. Speaking of blur, let's compare the portrait mode. Starting at 5X, we have the S24 Ultra, the iPhone, and then... Wait... The Pixel can't do 5X portraits? You can add portrait mode in after the fact, but that's not available in the portrait mode by default. What? Do it then? You think we're gonna waste five seconds of our lives on- The iPhone has the best edge detection here, but also the best Vaseline mode out of the three. What is it doing to my face? The Pixel is opting out for a more warmer photo while the Samsung aimed for perfection. Falling out to 2X, this is where the Pixel can actually shoot portraits. The iPhone's photo is the sharpest here with the best edge detection. Look how well it detects my hair. But the Samsung has a dedicated 3X telephoto, which if we punch in just a little with, yields the superior image. And now with 1X, the iPhone continues to add Vaseline and the Samsung takes the win again. Moving on to non-human subjects once again, the Pixel doesn't have any ability to take 1X or 5X portraits. Unlike before, this time Samsung takes the win for edge detection here with the better foreground and background separation. Let's not forget the high megapixel test, of course. Punching in, the results are pretty similar from last time. Though in this test this time, the Pixel takes the clear win with Samsung being a bit too over sharpened and iPhone being too soft. What about the ultra wide? Well, here we can see that the Samsung and the iPhone look pretty similar with noticeable noise, while the Pixel's higher aperture ultra wide takes the lead. Wait, Google make Pixel trams? But here, each of these ultra wides all look pretty much the same with just differences in contrast. Moving on to the wide angle, it's really hard to pick a winner. They all look pretty much the same during the day. Though in this image, the Pixel decided to focus on the people walking across instead of the lantern, despite them not being in the viewfinder. But daytime should be child's play for these cameras. It is day after all. The real challenge comes at night. Turning on night mode, we can see that the iPhone produces a pretty respectful image, with Pixel being a little bit too magenta. Samsung's photo just looks horrible. What was that? Anyway, I don't know what that was, but zooming in further with night mode, the iPhone just demolishes the competition. Samsung's performance here isn't anything new though. All the 8 Gen 2 galaxies also have this issue. Take a look for the Z Fold 5. No matter what you do with Samsung's night mode, it's just... Nightmare mode? What about video? The stabilization of the 5X lens is arguably the best part of Samsung. Pixel doesn't blow out the light, but holy Christ is it unstable. The lens flaring on the Pixel and iPhone are also pretty bad. How about video with the wide angle? The iPhone and Samsung do pretty well here, and Google... What's that sound? <laughs> Pixel's video is extremely noisy here, and Samsung actually keeps up with Apple. Good job! So Samsung, well done! You've overcome almost all the problems from the S23 Ultra. With its performance and its cameras, it is truly a flagship experience. Wait, I don't remember buying an S24 Ultra. Wasn't I just going to go get one? Huh? Huh? Oh, you're finally awake. Where am I? Yeah, apparently you fell over and got a pretty bad concussion. Plus, concussion? Wait. What's that? Powered by... Wait. What? Oh, God! Yeah, apparently you fell over and got a pretty bad concussion. Plus, we did a couple of blood tests and it turns out you do have a severe case of ligmaitis. Don't worry though, we'll be putting you through an intensive rehabilitation program where you'll be hitting the grits.